Hello everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is the movie guy who tries to draw, James Cork. And with me I have podcasting machine and plane walker extraordinaire, Norman Sanso. A vote for me is a vote for more episodes. And a vote for you is a vote for more recession. And also the man, the myth, the hypocrite, awesome brony reviewer, Silver Quill. I have made my mark. <laughs> and your mark is shaped like a feather. <laughs> That's right. Look at my touch. Look at my touch. Look, look, look at my touch. <laughs> oh my. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, I'd rather talk about your tourist than this episode. No. <laughs> and, and thus today, a new okay. ship was born. <laughs> <laughs> ah, silver cork, ship it. <laughs> no. Oh my god. And today we're going to be talking about Crusaders of the Lost Mark, which is episode 18 of season 5, overall episode number 109, written by Amy Keating Rogers. And I will be reading you the blurb directly from the wiki, because I'm not very good with words. In this episode, the Cutie Mark Crusaders discover another side of Diamond Tiara when they help Pipsqueak run for class president against her. That will be basically the synopsis of it. This episode was released on October 10th, 2015. That is five years after the premiere of this show on The Hub on October 10th, 2010. And it, it was pretty much of a big deal. So guys, consider this a fair warning. We're going to be talking spoilers pretty much from minute one. So if you haven't watched it, stop watching this, pause it, go back, to, go to watch the episode and then come back. So don't come join us two days later when you realize that we have ruined the episode for you. But yes, this episode is quite a big deal because, and spoiler warning, the CMCs will get their cutie marks in this episode, which is something that many people were looking forward to and they thought it was something that was never going to happen. Yes, I mean, let's be fair, five seasons without it happening, you kind of, you kind of become like them and you start, you, 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 you start losing hope <laughs> of it ever taking place. So, um, I, you know what? I very much want to know what you guys think of this. So, um, because I am under control again, haha, I escaped the, 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 the chains and the bars of the dungeon. I am back again on the control chair, haha. Uh, it's back to inverted alphabetical order for me. So the first in line is gonna be you, Silver Quill. So, what did you think of this episode, man? Yeah, you only got free because I built a window into a dungeon. I'm smart like that. <laughs> <laughs> did you remember to put on the bars? <laughs> Shoot, I knew I forgot something. Ah, dang. <laughs> anyway. anyway, okay, Crusader's Lost Mark. Oh, child, what have we unleashed? Okay, say, I've had, I've, on the record as saying multiple times, Q, earning QD marks as a group negates individual talent. Uh, I've also said what Diamond TR and Silver Spoon. Once they're reformed, they're pretty much out of the show because their their role as bullies has ended. I've said all these things, and yet when the, all this happened, I actually was very happy. The Crusaders have grown a lot since their introduction. When the, when they started, they were just cutie mark, cutie mark. Let's get our cutie marks. Then we had episodes about taking pride in your family, uh, forgiving your sister, uh, accepting who you are, and and not uh, letting physical ability define you. Uh, there have been so many great episodes for the Crusaders that had nothing to do with getting their cutie marks. So in a way, we don't need this conflict anymore. It's done. So they've still they're they're established enough characters that they can do more. And so this episode sort of clears the air. Now I will have plenty to say about the fact that they have nearly identical cutie marks. And then there's also the topic of Diamond Tiara's uh, redemption, which. Season five was the season for mega redemptions. <laughs> I mean, wow. How many characters had to come to Celestia moment? Five? Six? Sure feels More like than it. a handful. More than a handful for sure. More than a handful. And so therefore, yeah. we'll have to, we'll have to talk in depth about the fact that Diamond Tiara does a 180, but I have, I want to give this some further watchings to really cement my views on it, but all in all, I enjoy it. I enjoy the pace, and it's a signal. Any time an episode becomes a musical, something big about to happen. Brace oh. yourselves. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Magical Mystery Cure, uh, Pinky Pride, and now this. Yeah, but it, you have to admit that this is better pace than Magical Mystery Cure, at least. 
A punch to the face is better pace than magical mystery cure. <laughs> Oh my gosh. A punch to the face is over and done with, and you just left going, Oh god, why did you do that? Why did you hit me? <laughs> but it, but with Magical Mystery Cure, we get that we get a little lingering punch every time they bring up Princess Twilight. Really? I don't feel that way. I do. Well I'm I I, I'm re- I'm thinking about the season finale more than anything. Meh. Uh what about you, Norman? What about, what about you, man? What do you think of this episode? As for me, I'm not sure if I mentioned this on show or not, but I've always said that whenever the CMC has their cutie mark, show's over, pack up shop, let's go home, nothing to see here anymore. I've always said that. And watching them get their cutie mark in that scenario or in that moment, like was, I was happy and I was worried. So worried. Where... Why? What is why? We're not going to get more CMCs. Like, we're not going to get any more episodes, including them. Because their whole shtick was about, how do we get our cutie marks? How do we get our cutie marks? But I, I think that's uh, at face value for now. But I don't want to get into the other reasons that getting the cutie mark is good. That's for a discussion for when we get to that part. Like right now, I'm just saying what I'm thinking right now. It's like, oh, worried CMCs are not going to be there in the future anymore. Like they're just going to be some one-off background characters. Like they're not going to play any part at all. Like usually in MLP episodes, we have the main six episode, the individual main six episode. We got the CMC episodes. We got the musical episode of the series. So usually it's those kind of stories. Like in this one, if you guys remember with Trouble Shoes, we got him. And then you got those individual pony episodes. Like a good one for that was Scare Master. So yeah, you got those episode format kind of deal. And now that the CMC's got their cutie marks, we may not get them anymore. But uh, I'll say another reason why we'll get them in the future. But that's when we get to that part. James? Uh, well, what to say that you guys haven't said already? Uh, what I said before it is true. This episode is, at least on the pacing side of things, it is better paced than Magical Mystery Cure, but for me, it doesn't have that much of an emotional punch. And I do have a couple of bones to pick with the designs of the cutie marks that I think Silver and I are going to ro- rip those designs apart um, because I don't think they look all that good. But the fact that the writers decided to take this and actually give it an ending, that it's not really an ending, it's basically just the beginning of their journey. This is just a step on to becoming adults. Who knows if we're going to see the, the designs of the characters actually change in the next season, if they're going to look older or, or, or uh, taller or bigger. Um, but w- what happened is something that nobody can deny. The characters have grown up. They have become older. And this is another sign of maturity, which is so odd to see in TV shows nowadays. Um, for all that I know, the only TV show that did show uh, the age of character uh, evolve with the age of the actor playing, playing them was uh, Finn from Adventure Time. That as the voice actor got older, so did they age the, the character. I wasn't expecting MLP to do that. I wasn't expecting MLP to take this uh, gamble because it's a gamble and end this story arc that spanned five seasons. And uh, that uh, little montage that they have towards the end showing you all of the somewhat important episodes for the Cutemar Crusaders, that, that gives you kind of a sense of perspective that this is uh, the end of an era. And I am so glad that it was Amy Gideon Rogers, the one who got to write this one, because it seems that she was almost in charge of closing some of the storylines uh, that have been going since season one, like redeeming Gilda, giving Rarity her boutique on Canterlot, and now this. So, yeah, I think this is this is one of the best episodes of the season, but that's becoming so common with me that it's com- almost becoming irrelevant. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, really like this one. Very good. I cannot wait to start talking about it. <laughs> Though I wonder how we are going to do so. Do we go with themes, songs, or scenes? In this case, I'm actually, <clears throat> excuse me, more a fan of themes because there's stuff that happens, but it's not really consequential or it's just so rushed. The thing about, uh, 
musicals is that they're so fast paced. Hmm. So we're going to go via themes then. All right. In this case, I think we should we should talk about the songs uh, first, since this is a musical. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to mention what you just said. It's like the, you say that for a musical is very fast paced. Uh, wh what do you mean exactly? Look at what happens. We go through a student council election. Learn that it, learn part of the reason Diamond Tiara is so hostile. Have her go through a moral quandary and give them cutie marks. Any one of those could fill a whole episode. And the best way to condense that without relying on dialogue is a musical. Where, okay, there's lyrics, but technically dial musicals usually can speed things up. A true, true friend basically resolved the crisis facing the town at the, in just a few minutes. And it was a very, very enjoyable romp. I, I think the word here is musical montage. Remember <laughs> when we oh. need to get things speed up? It's, okay, guys, musical montage. You need a montage. <laughs> oh, everybody, gosh. everybody needs a montage. You need a montage. Yep. Well, but you know that, that they do this because uh, for 22 minute limit mark, that's a big of a, that, that, that is quite a burden when it comes to writing for the show. And also they, they know very well that music is the best way to convey emotions in a very fast, very practical way. So you don't need to faff about and just go with the feels. So, yeah, I think, but I, I think I understand what you mean when you say that it's very fast paced, that you, you almost have no time to breathe. It's like, aha, what's going on? <laughs> we go from scene to scene. I think when I first watched it, I was kind of, oh, it's a musical montage episode. Like, okay, this is cool. This is fun. Um, okay, it's about voting politics, uh, school politics to be exact, but hey, okay, there's never been a good episode that involves that, or never a good show that involves that kind of thing. Or movie. Uh, yeah, true that. So anyway, we're just gonna watch it, we're just gonna see it, and you know, it's gonna be fun, I guess. But, it has even deeper meaning behind it, where this episode is not about the whole, um, basically becoming class president, or, Diamond Tiara learning a valuable lesson near the end is this episode was always there and meant to be the CMCs getting their episodes, but it was well hidden. Like that thing was never hinted at from the very beginning. That was there near the end. Like that was like, poop surprise. Well, I think there was one very important lesson that we, that everyone learned from the, uh, the election scene. They'll promise you the moon and then they can't deliver. Oh yeah. A vote for me is a vote for new playground equipment. Well, look how well that turned out. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, 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 not gonna. It is what, what Pip does. He does, uh, uh, ally with Diamond Tiara, so he's, it's near the end. so her, so his plan can go, can go through. Yeah, but that's near the end. But the way, okay, the, the story flows where, the Pips Creek asks help for the CMCs. CMCs help by putting a musical montage for voting for Pip. And then... They, they become their campaign leaders. But I think that the whole thing works for Pip because Diamond Tiara uh, sabotages herself. True that. But to add to that thing too is the fact that Diamond Tiara has a, what you might call this, bad start. So yeah, we have her trying to say, oh, this happens to me because I'm brought up this way. Yeah, like, it, we should talk about best song in, this, in, the, in the episode. We, which one do you think is uh, the best song in the episode, guys? Oh, wow. It's been a while since I heard any of the songs. Like, I do remember that I like the voting song. I think Make Our Marks because that's really the core of this whole episode. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, it's been a while since I watched this one. So, showstoppers in my mind right now. My f my favorite is the the Diamond Tiara one, actually. The uh, the one titled The Pony I Want to Be. And that one and the reprise. The reprise especially is really good. Reminds me a bit of Lemmy Serabs. It has a very dark tone to it. And it manages to turn the character of Diamond Tiara into one... She was kind of a guilty pleasure character for me because she was awful. But she was so awful and she was so... She was reveling on how terrible she is. <laughs> but now she's, she's better, even though she kind of has to have a foil in the shape of her mother to become that better. Well, let's talk about Diamond Tiara now. Like, 
her who I think me and Silver always agreed that she was evil, evil incarnate. <laughs> Just like Angel Bunny. Oh no, Angel Bunny was up there. Like it was either... the one villain that never got redeemed. Yeah. Diamond Tiara was the villain that outlived villains like King Sombra, Discord, T Rex, and and Nightmare Moon and in their Queen evilness. In Queen, Queen Chrysalis. Chrysalis. Like yeah. remember that poster where they had all the villains? She was there too. <laughs> she was up front with Silver Spoon, <laughs> like. Ah, is it what? What? And and yet, Diamond Tara's redemption has been a fan favorite topic for fiction and other stories. Mm. So it's not like fans haven't dreamt of this. It, in some ways, it's a very positive thing. Even the most mean spirited individual can be redeemed or has a motive. The ratio of awful Diamond Tiara moments to redeemed ones is pretty. Staggering right now. It's it's out of balance. Yes. Yeah, but okay, uh, let's not talk about the comics because in the comics, oh god, she was awful in that one. But the, we have to talk about the show as for now because um, the most diabolical thing I think she did was in um, the Cutie Mark in season four where the Cutie Mark was trying to perform their act. You and, fly to the finish. Yeah, fly to the finish. They were messing one. with uh, Scootaloo's uh, yeah. inability to fly. That was the lowest moment. Uh, yeah. for the oh, yes. Of yes. Tr- true, true villainy. This is, you see, you can't blame that on her mom. Her mom pushes, stresses, you have to be the, the winner, the best. So in that way, everything Diamond Tiara has been doing is supposed to be motivated by this pressure from her family. Mm-hmm. However, one, I've always thought Filthy Rich was actually kind of cool. Oh yeah, I thought that too. But did we think about that well, in the comic sense, or did I think I think Filthy Rich is fine. The problem is the mother, and to be honest, it only takes one rotten apple to spoil the bunch. So it only takes the influence of one parent to uh, ruin the kid. I have seen that. Well, this this kid got ruined for a little while. Uh, yeah. But but here's a question: Is giving to Iman Tiara? A terrible mother, a dodge of responsibility. I think it's not that. I, I think the thing about her mother was she set it up. She looks at her family more higher than the rest of the other citizens of Ponyville. And she always stresses that she was better than the rest or their family is better than the rest. I was a bit shocked when Filthy Rich was kind of mean because I always thought that he was the kind of balanced guy. Like, I'm what, rich. When did you see Filthy Rich being mean in the show? Like, in this episode. Like, look at how he looks at Diamond Tiara. Look at oh, how but he... That would, be, that would be Filthy Rich. That wouldn't be like, uh, uh, her mother. Yeah, what did I say? I thought I was saying his dad. You said Filthy. You, you, you said Filthy. You didn't say uh, Spoil Rich. That is the name of... Uh, Diamond Tiara. No, yeah, that's uh, what I said. Like I'm talking about the dad because when you oh, look, okay. when you look at him in this, like in scenes, like if you look at the song, her father looks at her like, "Wow, that that's not a look that I want my dad to give me." That that was just ugh, no. That was a lot well, that's of why, no. That's why there can be the objection that this episode is changing, di- retconning Diamond Tiara's backstory, saying, "Oh yeah, her father's equally prideful." I'm thinking about more to murder, but I don't know. Like when you look at Filthy, I think it's more of hit canon and more of PR when he does the thing with the Apple family, like talking to Granny Smith and whatnot. I think that could be PR, like he's putting up a mask or something like that. But I'm not hundred percent sure. That's hit canon talking there. Diamond Tiara is young enough that I think you can still say her family has a huge impact. She's not quite at that age where you have a certain accountability for how you've turned out. We still sort of blame the parents for the, uh, how does the Oompa Loompa song go? Uh, what do you do when the kid is a brat whining and crying like a Siamese cut? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, so, it's, it's, the, it's the case of monkey see, monkey do. What they, of. what the parents do, what the parents do, uh, the child is going to uh, recreate because they are the biggest uh, source of influence. So kind of like when you uh, when you're been a, a kid and you're been raised by your parents, you run the risk of becoming uh, an image of them until you can actually become your own self, which is kind of what Diamond Tiara does in this episode, really, because she doesn't follow what the, what her parents are telling her. She ends up doing the other way around. She makes a decision that is not conditioned by uh, by her mom or her dad. She 
follows what her talent is meant to do, which is having other people, uh, having other ponies do whatever she wants, which, to be honest, is something that we have been seeing from the very beginning. You remember in season four when she had that butler do uh, aerobics instead of her? Yeah, she is good at doing that kind of thing. She just was doing it for the wrong reasons until this episode. I always wonder what her cutie mark is. Like, it's just... Uh, it's a diamond the era. Yeah, like, what does it mean? <laughs> like, what do you do? But well, okay. usually, usually tiaras are kind of like crowns. Crowns are a way to, to signify a, a a position, a status, social status. Usually, of people that are in command. So perhaps mm. it's about giving command and having others do whatever she wants. Yeah, but sometimes you have to remember <laughs> when you give that when you give a youngin that much power, she's going to be a she's going to grow up and be a brat. So we do see it here, but I don't know. Like Silver mentioned the twist or the ch sudden change like when did that happen could it be because of what she did and because of and because that she lost all her friends is it because of that i think it's hmm. well one everyone's been waiting for silver spoon to step out of diamond tiara's shadow even for a minute yeah. ever since she danced with or hopped with the other fillies and uh the other foals uh in uh, family Appreciation Day, people have wondered, hey, is Silver Spoon really as bad as Diamond Tiara? Now, I held her accountable when she, too, joined in harassing Scootaloo. I mean, there's, there, that was the low point for them both. Inexcusable. And that's what I mean when I say that the ratio is still staggering. We need some episodes of Diamond Tiara struggling with her new life to really cement this is a new direction for her and not a hasty exit from the show. True, I feel that way too because it's going to be one of those situations where it's going to be another sunset shimmer. Yeah, but yeah, that, I, I was going to mention that because you don't want to have, uh, you don't want to have an episode where, uh, Diamond, Diamond Tiara or Silver Spoon or both, they have to play the redemptive type because that gets old really fast. Just the, the, the entire length of Rainbow Rocks is pretty much that problem and it's so annoying. <sighs> you don't want to have the Kitty Crusaders going, no offense, every uh, five minutes. Please, no. Looking at this and how things are going to be changing, I, I think if we do get future episodes of them, I'm going, I'm feeling that they're going to do more with what they can do because uh, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are kind of Redemptive characters, they're learning their ways now. I'm not entirely sure if, if Silver Spoon is gonna be the, the, the redemptive type because she has had more likable moments than Diamond Tiara. It is, she, uh, uh, Silver Spoon was the lucky. She was the one that didn't have a, enough personality to have anybody follow her. And this is the first time that we have seen Silver Spoon doing something different from Diamond Tiara. Yeah, but she doesn't still, have to you have dance, to remember. Dance but... to her. As she says, she doesn't have to follow her drama anymore. Yeah, but you have to and... remember that she's still working her way to people trusting her. Maybe she got it easier than um, Diamond Tiara, but hey, she's still a big meanie pants. She made Scootaloo feel bad about herself. Maybe people are going to accept her more easier than Diamond Tiara, but still, she's mean. I do have to say one thing with all the things that we're talking about, her redemption and everything. I think that the timing of her redemption was very well done. And I'm very glad that they did it the way they did it. Um, when it, it was obvious that they were going to have a, an episode where the CMCs were going to have their cutie marks uh, uh, and they were going to achieve them. But I was always so worried that Diamond Tiara was going to go to the cutie mark crusaders and either she was going to... Uh, mock them for the significance of, the, of their cutie marks or say, hey, I'm very sorry for what what I did to you and basically now that you have your cutie marks, I consider you equals. Mm. I am glad, I am glad that her turn of heart and her, uh, her uh, turnaround happens before the CMCs get their cutie marks. In that moment, when Diamond Tiara confronts her mother, she finds the CMCs as equal despite them not having their cutie marks. Yeah, okay, yeah, they have their cutie marks like two minutes later, and that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of it. But that was, I was fine with that. I was like, you know what? Good. You solved that issue before creating another one. I am, I am happy with it. And the way that it all ended up was from the CMCs just wanting to be nice to Diamond Tiara because, well... Her only friend left her, her parents are big beanie pants, and she's all alone. And the CMCs, being the CMCs, wanted to make her feel good and invited them to the clubhouse. And here 
it's an angle where I'm seeing that they started in season five, where the CMCs help people or help ponies or other ponies with their cutie marks, which was kind of strange. I think I mentioned this in the Trouble Shoes episode, where the CMCs, how do they know so much about the cutie marks? They don't even have any. Well, I guess that was the that was their inkling towards this this life. Uh, there is always that argument that this is, again, this is hasty, this is rushed. Uh, they haven't gone through self-discovery and sooner or later we're going to have to talk about the big thing that they earn their cutie marks as a group. Oh yeah. Let's talk about that. I want to but, hear you say that, uh, Silver. I, yeah, go, go on. Go for it. Alrighty. Well, here's the thing. Cutie marks have changed. The meaning has changed a lot since the show started. At one point it was your special talent. Then it was your destiny. Then it's your true self. One could argue Destiny and True Self are, are one and the same, but more on that later. So what a cutie mark is supposed to mean has changed. The idea of earning your cutie marks as a group, to me, has always gone against the concept of individual talent, mostly because that says the group defines you, and I am horrified by that idea. Uh, it's saying you have no identity as an individual, only what the group brings value. So when I saw three little shields, I thought, oh, wow, really? Really? Now, thankfully, each shield is has a variant that ties into their individual talent. Scootaloo has a speed. Sweetie Belle has a lovely singing voice, so she has a musical note. Apple Bloom. A- apple. <laughs> apple! <laughs> Buy some apples! Love for apples! So there is that, that variance, that uniqueness within the group. But if, this, if there were, say, a Wonderbolt cutie mark, and all the Wonderbolts had it. I'd be horrified. I'd think, well, that pretty much says there's no point in even trying to train to become a Wonderbolt. You already are just by having this mark. But I also do want to point out the main six who earned their cutie marks in this grand moment of shared destiny that is uh, going to become a big topic later on. They all had individual marks denoting their unique personalities. So all that said, there's one aspect to this that uh, I think is important to keep in mind. The Crusaders start, this is the brainchild of these three uh, fillies. They gave identity to the group first. It makes sense because they started this together and shaped it through their combined efforts. If it were any other group, I'd be horrified. This one makes a kind of sense, but the caveat is no other pony can ever get these cutie marks. It has to be this triumvirate because otherwise those ponies are being absorbed into the group identity rather than establishing it well then again the, the main six nobody else has the same cutie marks as the rest of the main six um albeit animation errors etc uh but when it comes to the the cutie mark crusaders uh I think that the, the problem is not so much that it kind of breaks the whole individualistic nature of getting a cutie mark um, well, they kind of like they have been together since episode one, and I mean that literally together since episode one. But I think the biggest problem when it comes to that is the design and the colors they are using for it. <sighs> the, it, it looks fine on Sweetiebel, it looks okayish on Scootaloo, but it looks terrible on Apple Bloom. <laughs> Those colors, I, I know what they were going for. Main color combined with the the, the color of their. Uh, Eyes or whatever, but I mean, those colors on Apple Bloom, they look terrible. <sighs> well, you do see other ponies with terrible cutie mark, like poor no cat guy. But still, to me, when I see the cutie marks for the CMC here, like, okay, they have the same shield, but different individual things in the middle. But you have to remember that they are the cutie mark crusaders and their goal in life, as they say, was to help other people with their cutie marks or other blank flags with their cutie marks or even other ponies with their cutie marks and stuff. Like, we do see them acting out those things with trouble shoes. Is that the only one that they did? Because I'm thinking, wait, oh yeah, they also did with Diamond Tiara here. That's their destiny. Like, they're the pony to go to for cutie mark problems. So, yay. You know, I just had a thought. This re- Have you guys ever watched a TV show called Nets Nude? No. Nope. Can't say I've heard no. of it. 
it's a it's a TV, it's a TV show about a guy a, a little kid called Ned who has a newt, and when he gives it a special kind of food, the newt becomes the basically the genie from Aladdin and speaks in pop culture references. And the, there is an episode where Ned is trying to break a, a world records, and he's trying to he's trying everything like you know. Uh, every type of world record out there and he fails at all of them and then they are like oh well you failed all of these world records that in itself is a world record it's mm-hmm. like the most failed attempts at trying to break a world record is this guy so this kind of feels like that it's like so you're trying to get your cutie mark so in trying to get your cutie mark you became a cutie mark expert so your cutie mark is about knowing how to get your cutie mark and finding the meaning of your cutie why marks. do I feel a yo dog here moment it is so weirdly meta when it comes to that. Is that wow? You have the power to see into the into the meso- metaphysical implications of the screenwriting. <laughs> this is what it's meant to be. I can read symbolism. Uh, but still, but still, like with our heroes getting their cutie marks, this is the end of an era where we are waiting for them to get their cutie marks, and the start of another adventure for the future. And yeah, with every happy moment, we gotta have a party. Party, or and and another song where they talk about if mom and dad were here, they'd be so proud of you. (laughs) Yes, that's that's the reaction across the fandom when a giant sniffle. Oh, that moment! Like you have Big Mac, Granny Smith, and Apple Jack being proud of Apple Bloom, and like that was touching. And then you see. Rainbow Dash and Scootaloo, like she's so proud. There you go. Variety and Sweetie Belle. Wait, but okay, here's the thing. Uh, The fandom has always mentioned that, oh, Scootaloo is an orphan. (laughs) She lives in a box under Rainbow Dash's house. (laughs) And yeah, funny as it is, but that's mean spirited. We know she lives in a house. Not sure it's an orphanage or not, but we do know that she lives inside a house. So that's cool. Scootaloo here? Where are her parents? They are having a coffee off screen. Oh. They're just wait they're just sitting over there going, Good for you, Scootaloo, we're proud, they we're are, not gonna interrupt time. They are hanging out with Rainbow Dashes and Flutterfish's parents. I always had this hit canon where Rarity's parents are one of those parents who loves to go on vacations. You know those people, right? Like always going on vacations. Like I'm envisioning that's them. Who knows? But we we know she has a room at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But yeah. So if that, our heroes get their cutie marks and flashbacking to for the whole entire five seasons of them trying to earn their cutie marks. Like, oh my god, such memorable moments from their first meeting at the cute Sinera for to their jamming session from that. Yeah, zip lining, wow. the, 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 the hearts and hooves day, yeah, so Babsy, the Equestria games, uh, uh, having, uh, hanging out with Twilight, with Twilight time, travel shoes and all that. Yeah, it's, uh, they, they forgot their very first appearance though, which is in episode one. That was always a contradiction. Yeah, that one didn't really count, but still, it was a nice moment to see. <laughs> actually, actually, I guess we can just assume they were too terrified of, uh, of Nightmare Moon to even notice who they were standing next to. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. <laughs> and then, so it, and then, it is pretty. It is pretty funny that they were, wow, first first episode of the series. And then, like, and then, like all good children, they they repressed it into childhood trauma. <laughs> but you know what, right? You know what? Um, do you, you remember the, how the main six got their cutie marks by that one big event? So what? They all got together because of Nightmare Moon. Yes. No, you're talking about the Sonic Rainbow, right? No, 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 like, that was the main six. This event is for the CMCs. Like, Nightmare Moon came out, all the CMCs gathered together, not knowing who they are. And one event, which is the cute scenario for uh, Diamond Tiara, um, got them <laughs> together. Both involved in Terrible Villains, I by know! The way. <laughs> so, yeah, so much... Someone should say, so Princess Luna, it turns out your thousand years imprisonment had a purpose, uniting three fillies. And she just looks at you and says, forgive me if I withhold my enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, but still, talking about her, our, our heroes get a group shot and Spike sends the letter. And we got a wonderful scenario, which is oh, just so awesome. I like this. I like this. <laughs> uh, and then we end. We end. 
and that's the end. But it, it it's not really the end. Uh, they kind of give it. Uh, they kind of hinted that this is not the end of the journey. It's only the beginning. Oh yeah, it, it's the yeah. end of the be... cutie marks searching <laughs> scenario, but it's the beginning <laughs> of something else. It's 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 basically we're gonna talk about that on the next episode. But this is basically what happens when you finish your degree. It's like aha, I finished five years of college. It's over. I can now get my. I have my purpose now. I have my diploma. What do I do with it now? <laughs> <laughs> now uh, I can face crippling unemployment. Oh <laughs> uh, no! But still, is that all we need to talk about? Because um, to be honest, I think I think we pretty much covered everything fairly oh, well. No, but... no, 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 no. Oh? We have missed. We have missed something important. We have missed something critical. Which is oh, what is when when Diamond Tiara demands a recount? Oh, having having lost, Shira Lee says, "Trust, I counted, Diana. Trust me, you lost." It's like, ooh, sassy Lee. <laughs> but then I thought, wait a minute. The Cutie Mark Crusaders drew attention because their role took place at the school. Now their new role is going out into the world. Is this the last we'll really see of Cheer Lee? Nah, we'll see more of her. No, why? Because the CMCs got their cutie marks. Uh, the yeah. Students and Phyllis and Colts keep going to class despite having their cutie marks. Mm -hmm. And yet most much of the drama at school was centered around, the, you know, finding their cutie marks. If this takes mm. them in a bold new direction, the school may be reduced. And now that uh, all the uh, Chiramac shippers are crying in their beers... <laughs> But, you know, Silver, uh, I don't think that's going to happen because think about it this way. When season one ended and the start of season two, um, we're not going to get any more Dear Princess Celestia letters, but we still do see her, like, even though Princess Celestia never been a mainstay. But, like, come on, she, we're living in Ponyville. We're going to still have some story involving Shirley in yeah. some shape or form. Just because I, the CMCs got their cutie marks, that means that Princess Luna is, might be also be relevant, despite she is not going to be appearing in any dreams anytime soon. Mm. I don't know. Let us. We will see how this uh, plays out. But I just like, well, I, I don't want Cheer Lee to go away. I find her a very fun character. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Like, but I'm sure she'll make an appearance here and there. Like, come on, she's the school teacher of Ponyville, and the CMCs are still students. I'm sure they're gonna have more adventures. Maybe doing something about, uh, let's see, what's fun with school? Uh, school dance, school prom. So yeah, we have that too to look forward to. Oh my god, we're gonna get that kind of episode. Great, you've introduced a new shipping episode. Uh, but that mentioned <laughs> Sweetie Bell. Yay! Oh, oh wait, there was a there was a, a different colored button mash this uh, yeah. episode, wasn't I there? Yep, I remember that. Yeah, there was one. Yeah, that uh, was I, weird. I don't know if that was to to differentiate him from Jan Animations, you know, clean slate or whatever, or if they just thought he was too dark. Wasn't there one little filly that lifted the school? Yeah, oh, yeah, that little the filly thing. with the super normal, super abnormal strength. She and Mod Pie should hang out. They'd totally be best friends. Why do I envision the start of some Avenger program going on here? Oh yeah, now that now that they need to get a new main six going. Well, I can see, okay, you got the super strength, and then we got the pony who has a freakishly strong teeth. And then you got what? Um, person who, ah, there's a lot in this show. I don't know what to say, like, uh. I think that despite how dense this episode is, because it's very dense, that's what happens when you get a, a, a musical episode. Despite all that, it's very straightforward. But still, um, it's one of those episodes where I highly enjoyed it. Like, uh, you know what? Um, uh, if we're done, we can just go to final thoughts. I vote for going for final thoughts, yeah. Uh, right, finality, which I guess is me. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. oh, yes, I'm the final word. Oh, yeah. It's the end of one one phase and the start of another. You could end the show here and people would be happy to know that the Key Marker series got their marks. But it's also fun to see what what they'll do with them. I've long held, just because, much like graduating from school, just because you have an inkling of your future does not mean you know what you're going to do with it. I got a, a broadcasting degree, uh, bachelor's, and I tried working at uh, a news station, a sports station, and human oddities uh, show. Never did I think that I, my proudest achievements would be doing internet videos for uh, a fandom. So you know, life takes different shapes than we expect, and that's part of the fun. So I'm I'm curious to know where the Crusaders will go from here. I'm fine with le leaving this to rest. 
And I figure, much like Twilight's wings, like the new castle, it takes a little adjustment time to recognize these marks on their on their rumps. Also, stop ch- staring at children's rumps, you sickos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. wow. oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> What about you, Norman? What, what, what? What are your final thoughts? My final thoughts. My final thoughts for this episode was, I highly enjoyed this episode. This episode, when I first watched it, was it made me feel bad for Diamond Tiara. It made me feel sympathy for her. It, it was overall a nice episode. I remember watching it live on stream, and that moment when the CMCs got their cutie mark, I like my mind was blown. I didn't know what to say. It was one of those. Moments where, like, five years in the making. Oh my god, five years in the making. <laughs> it blew my mind. I I don't know what to say. And sitting here discussing it with you guys, it's still the same. For me, I may have gone a bit overboard when I say that this is my uh, favorite episode. But still, it it was pretty good. Like, I would say it's my top fave episode. But I, would I say that it took over Lesson Zero? Uh, it's close. I'm trying, I'm really thinking that it might be better than Lesson Zero. But still, I don't know. Lesson Zero got Fluttershy snapping a better snack. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, you might not be alone in there, Norman, because right now Equestria Daily is running a poll on the best episode of the season, and Crusaders of the Lost Mark is winning with 22.98% of the votes. <laughs> <laughs> like, out of the 26 episodes, <laughs> Crusaders of the Lost Mark has almost one quarter of the votes. So, I think you're not alone. Yeah. Everybody liked this episode. This true, episode. true. I mean, it's hard for me to say, because you have a bratty kid turning good, it's a basic. It's basically a redemption story done kind of fast. We we always like those redemptive characters. We always do, and them doing it here, it's kind of cool. I don't know what to it's say. It's a yeah. it's a redemption story mixed with a coming of age story mixed with uh, the the end of uh, the end of a journey, the beginning of another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, story. It's many stories wrapped into one. True that. True that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, for me, I highly enjoyed it, and it's up there. It's up there. What about you, James? I think this is the most important and perhaps the best Cutie Mark Crusaders episode uh, to date. They close the chapter with this episode, and like like Silver said, if they ended this show right after this episode, I think everybody will be happy. I will be happy too. I could skip the other eight episodes that we have left of the season just for this. Like They could have made this one the season finale, and people will be cheering and clapping and, yeah, this is awesome! Not only is it, in, is it very difficult to cram all that information in 22 minutes, but also doing it in a, in a satisfying way, that rarely happens. And I don't want to keep bringing up Magical Mystery Cure, but that's a very good example of an episode that you either love it or hate it. I think it's not very difficult to love this episode. I will be willing to, to, add, to admit many people will put it on their top five favorite episodes of, of season five. So, uh, yeah, I liked it very much. I was so glad to see that Diamond Tiara is not going to be a villain anymore. Now we only have to worry about that uh, dark spawn of Satan that is Angel Bunny. And uh, <laughs> we don't have to worry about the Cutie Mark Crusaders trying to worry for their, uh, getting their Cutie Marks. They got them now, not to see what they do with them. Uh, I say uh, adventure in Manhattan with Bab Sid. Yes, that sounds fun. Hmm. So, yeah, very happy with this episode, really liked it. What a better way to celebrate the five-year anniversary than by closing that, that, than closing that, uh, that story arc. Ending it with that was awesome. Like celebrating the fifth-year anniversary of that. And also knowing that this is the second to last episode that Amy Keating Rogers will ever write for this show. It's a very emotional uh, end of a ride. By the way, James, what's next week's episode going to be? Oh, my gosh. Next episode, it's going to be the one where Pinkie Pie knows. That is episode 19 of season 5, overall episode 110. Written by newcomer to the show, but veteran on the books, GM Barrow. And that one is going to be an interesting one to talk about. But that's another story for another time. Until then, guys, thank you so much for watching this show. Thank you so much for listening to us. And if you want to tell us anything, just leave a comment in the comments or send us an email. What's the email address, Norman? It's show at gmail.com. So we're looking forward to what you guys have to say. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you all next time. This has been James Cork. 
And I am Norman Sanzo, and I probably take this position of power. And I am Silver Quill, and a vote for me is a vote for Snark. <laughs> See you all guys next time. Bye bye. See ya. Adios. Considering the political talk and everything, that sounds more like the end of a campaign fanfare than anything else. <laughs> no, no, no. Silver for president. <laughs> <laughs>